mic on. Okay. Hello, hello. Seeing if anyone's around. Just want to give myself a little bit more time. Just uh, probably gonna re up on some water and then just get going with the uh, analysis. So, sit tight for a little while. And I'll be right back and run for a go. My golf. Mic on. Let's cut this off. And let's see where we can start off. I understand that uh, Lukewarm is also uploading things as he goes, so whatever might be the last match that he uploaded, that might be the point where I might have to stop as well until everything's uploaded to its entirety. But still give him big ups for making something happen when it wasn't really possible to do so. Considering how much of a pain in the ass it is in order to stream kind of versus in the first place. So show him some love when he whenever he got the chance. Alright, first match uh, let me see who it is. Now I can see Perfect Strike, so it's Testament, ver Testament and Lukewarm Holiday with X1 Full Cloth and GPO3 versus Them Boys, the Unstoppable, Unshakable, Unbeatable Duo of Pompa Dude and Lumin Abyss with Nightingale and Perfect Strike. All right, uh, do I want to have some music in the background? Eh, not quite. I guess just probably do it this way. Now we're in the viewpoint of Lukewarm, with GPO3. Pay attention to the radar. There's a certain position that GPO3 kind of maintains along with his partner. Since so considering that GPO3 is a back suit, he's maintaining that perfect distance, so whenever either one of them approaches him, 
he could react with either Demolition Chain or BC or Garobi which is uh, AC creates a neutral spacing using his missiles which is a combination of 5 AB and either 4 or 6 AB making good use of his steps also throwing out some beams after a certain point he's trying to keep Nightingale a bit reserved so full cloth can move in and he's always throwing in those missiles whenever there's an okay opportunity now that uh, full cloth is at low health it seems like he's opting to stay for a much more reserved approach. He's gonna burst right there. Ooh! Up close and personal right there. Now, the next time Nightingale spawns, it's gonna be a bad day. But then again. Nightingale can kind of outmaneuver his way out of situations. But as for GPO3, this is even this is an even worse situation there. Because being overcosted as a 400 with a 500 400 comp can be very scary. I don't know if it's preferable that you have the uh the 500 being overcosted, but I guess in a sense of performance, it would be much better to it would be much better as the 400 to be overcosted instead because you give him a lot more room for the 500 to do his work. But it all depends on how defensive you can play or how many opportunities you can open at the same time. But if you're a suit that has little maneuverability or any mobility options to keep themselves safe it can be quite a very dangerous situation no matter how you shake it so that's zero one them boys leading Alright, match two. And considering the length of the matches, the length of the video as a whole, I'm pretty sure it was an even fight. Now we're in the perspective of full cloth here already used up his Murasama Blaster and Peacock Smasher so he's not gonna be moving in too much until he gets those back so the one thing he's doing is just trying to pull with the screen with his main and buying some time until his CSA and CSB are back He activates again, activating both of them this time, but gets knocked down for his troubles. And that's the one thing you do not want to be as a full cloth. You do not want to be knocked down or knocked out of commission to the point where you're wasting a lot of time from your, your power-ups. Outside of that, that's fine, but during those power-ups, it is essential that you have enough time in order to keep yourself charged up as possible. Oh, I thought he was going to let those uh, side mailers rip.
Whip. Oh no. Didn't get a chance to use his whip. Now he's really trying to buy us some time. Oh wait, this is from a different different perspective of the same match. Huh. I should have caught on that. But that's actually pretty good too. See how Full Cloth was playing it, see how GPO3 was playing it. And now we should probably see Nightingale. Ah, perfect strike. Starts off with CSA. Uses his assist in order to f fish something out. Ooh, going for those wild swings with that CS with that eight eight that boost dash melee. And he always uses that CSA at a certain distance, mostly outside of uh, green outside of red lock. Probably to catch someone moving in a very strange position. CSA tends to hit in very erratic motions. So I guess it's more of a neutral tool than just trying to confirm from a certain position. Perfect Strike stays close to the ground to see if uh, Full Cloth is going to try and dive after him. But also maintains a good vector position, so any shot that would have been fired right at him would have gone right over his head. Responds well to that uh, step conflict. But gets hit by the demolition chain by GPO3. CCAB, but missed the timing on the second one. But hit the jackpot on that one on GPO3 instead. Probably opted for a safer route just in case if he was going to get cut. Uh, let me do something real quick. I might as well just switch this to... Uh Gunnam versus Tag, so... And just update this. And right back to the saddle. So... Each upload is pretty much from a different perspective, which is, I find, a very good thing. Because I can actually analyze how each and every player approaches it. And those different views can offer a lot of insight, especially for those like me, who want to know how to counterplay and also get a good idea of if I want to play those suits how should I be playing them in the first place especially in a certain organized comp so next up would be in Pompidou's point of view Now, the thing with Nightingale is, he's fast. 
He's squirrely. He's pretty much the Samal. He's the Samal Hong of Gundam. Why? How can something that big be able to move so fast and so squirrely that you can't even hit him? Well, let me just focus here. A lot of his mobility when it comes to approaching any kind of offensive situation, he usually curves around. He swerves a little bit. And if he sees a good opportunity to punish a landing, he would use BC in order to stun the opponent. CSB in order to catch opponents off guard, especially if they're trying to approach you. And the uh, scatter shot, which is the uh, AC, to stagger like that. To stagger or knock down, especially at an off axis. He's using his uh, funnels, which is his AB. In the case that they move in a very strange way where their landing is awkward, would punish them. But also forces the opponent to move around and waste a boost. Alright, he's overcosted, but I don't think he's that much concerned since Perfect Strike is wreaking some havoc. Full cloth is right after him, but Perfect Strike helps bail him out. Now, I feel that if GPO3 kind of pushed his offense a little bit more on Nightingale, he probably would have folded. But then again, contesting against Nightingale in a, in a ranged fight can be quite the arduous task. All right, next match. I think it's this. I think it's uh, the same thing. So zero one. Activates Marsama and Peacock again. Ooh, that was a nice confirm. Uses his assist in order to catch in order to fish for something. Ooh, that was actually a very tight dodge. I probably would have gotten hit by that. I think it was that focus on Nightingale that he missed Perfect Strike coming, so... That definitely caught him off guard. And it gets hit by the CSA! Wait, hold on. Doesn't have anti -B I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me for a moment. I thought that his uh, CSA or CSB actually uses an eye field to protect him. Hmm. Someone might be able to clear that up on me. Oh, the beam fence ripped through his ABC. Or anti beam cloak. I feel doesn't protect him? Ah, okay. I thought for a moment it did, but I guess he probably had a little bit of his ABC, just enough in order to shield him. But Tess is really doing a good job at staying as low to the ground as possible. 
using step dive to using step dive and uh, keeping his height and vectors in this a kind of hard hit position to hit. He's gonna go for the charge, but he has to worry about perfect strike hit coming on his ass. One wrong move, but I, <laughs> I guess that he had a lot of faith in Luke. People seem to forget that GPO3 can really do a number on you at close quarters. It's just as game plan mostly revolves around mid to long range combat. Now in the perspective of perfect strike. A Hail Mary with a CSA using Agnes in order to try and hit something. Gets a nice little landing punish on F on full cloth. Another nice landing punish. Throws out Shining Edge, see if anyone's gonna bite. He knows that he was out of ammo, so he went in. And he never stops going in. He would never stop going if he, even if he tried not to. But that CSA actually hit. Ah, uh, he got killed by the demolition chain. He's holding on to that half burst. Just in case if anything goes south. He's trying to be a little bit conservative with his main. Just to have it recharge a little bit. But gets hits for his troubles. There was another CSA. Try to see if he was gonna, if any of the two were gonna move in, but gets hit by the micro missiles. Now let's see what he's gonna do next. Now he starts using his burst. It gets whipped away. Tries to go in, but uses assist to cover him, but gets blindsided by GPO3. So, if we're keeping count, it's 1 1. Anything goes. Who's next on the perspective? I, my guess would be. Nightingale. Yeah, there's a lucid bracket, but I think. I don't think it's uploaded to its entirety. Luke is still uploading some footage of the rest of the top eight. So it's going to be a while before that happens. Ooh. Oh, those Varingers are really killing him. Throws out funnels, tries to catch or force some movement. Throws out some BC BC fence funnels. Yeah, 
half burst in order to try and get some sort of advantage, but he gets demolition chain for his troubles. So that was a really rough first life. Let's see if he can uh, make amends for that. Ooh, that was a that was a bad trade. He has that CSA primed. It seems like he seems like uh, Pompidou is actually playing a little bit more defensively this time around, as opposed to the more offensive and aggressive style of play that he had in the first match. Oh, that was definitely a good kill, capitalizing on that paralysis. And that's game on this side. I guess I can kind of skip around. But, uh, I kind of want to do it in full. Like I said, I want to kind of cover each and every perspective. Next up, we have full, no, GPO3. He's using a lot more step diving now, as opposed to his first match. Kind of measuring out the distance, getting a feel for it using his micro missiles. Just preferring single shots instead of allowing main to just rip. Punishes that little pause using that BC. It's still good despite being nerfed in his tracking, so. They can't really escape from that. Hold up. Uh. Oh, right, right. I thought I saw something different. Use a CSA in order to compensate for the low ammo count. Oh. Had he let that rip. Let me go back to that point. Had he let it rip, I think it would have hit Nightingale and Perfect Strike. And probably killed it full cloth in the process. But it would have been a huge lead right from the get-go. It would have been a worthwhile sacrifice considering that Full Cloth is already at low health. And it would be much better than him getting chased after and getting, being the one responsible for overcosting. Oh, that was a preemptive demolition chain. Very slick. Oh, there was that good trade on GPO3's part. Uses those micro missiles again in order to kind of uh, capitalize on neutral. Really good placements on those main shots. Nice use of the movement of the demolition chain in order to move out of harm's way, but still gets clipped. Flies high into the sky, but gets paralyzed for overheating. 
But he notices that uh, Perfect Strike is bleeding. I think I'm trying to figure out what hit him. I think it was like a point blank shot. Yeah, it was a point blank shot. But it seemed like he got hit from behind. Now I'm kind of mind fucked. Yeah, it was a shot from behind. Either... No, it can't be a striker, because... I think he shot right before... Right before, uh... Perfect Strike even got ahead of him. If there was a striker, it probably would have been uh, Full Cloth's kill, since he used, he <clears throat> since he was using uh, Zaku One, Gerhardt's uh, Zaku One as an assist. But I think he just popped a shot off way earlier. Yeah, no micro missiles either. Otherwise, well, if he used micro missiles, he would have been punished hard. So, uh, I guess it was just a preemptive shot. Now let me just take a sip of water. <clears throat> Alright, match three. It's 1-1, one, one, them boys, versus the Testament of Luke. I just thought of that name, but it's mostly Testament and Lukewarm. Now in the perspective of Full Cloth. Oh, nice catch on the uh, shotgun spread. Whenever you see a full cloth using Peacock Smasher like that, they're definitely trying to catch as many landings as they can. Or to keep you from moving from side to side. His, beam, his anti beam cloak got knocked out. Blocks the first shot, but the second shot kind of knocked him off balance. Gets hit with a surprise CSB. Uh, not CSB. ACB. The CCAP, what am I saying? And it looks like GPO3 is bleeding. And so was Perfect Strike too. Test pops his burst and kills Nightingale. Guns after Perfect Strike. Perfect Strike bursts to get out of that combo. But I guess he was lucky after that because GPO3 got his attention. And there was a lot of blood in the water after that. Nightingale was bleeding after being overcosted, and that was that. Okay, who's the next perspective we're going to be seeing from? Alright, we're seeing from Perfect Strike. Gets knocked down first. He's just biding his time. No wild movements. Throws out a CSA in order to try and catch someone moving erratically. 
Neely gets whipped for his troubles. Yep, that first shot that first shot from the beam rifle knocked him off balance. It's kind of ill advised to block in Gun and Versus, mainly because of things like that could happen. But I think blocking in the air is much more dangerous than blocking while you're close to the ground. Because your guard doesn't adjust to uh certain attacks. And it takes more than one attack or well placed follow up in order to just break that. So you're kinda guard broken from the get go. CCAB uses his assist in order to fill in the gap. Ooh, gets side whipped. We're trying to approach him on the other side. Ah, uh, but gets landing punished. Nightingale is also bleeding from that point on and gets destroyed. Was forced to burst after that. Guns after GPO3 since he's at low health. But I guess he was kind of uh, torn between getting the kill against GPO3 or trying to cut full cloth. That's why he kind of looked back for a moment. Alright, I think we're going to be going to Nightingale's perspective or GPO3. But this match ended. Pr this match ended pretty fast. Throws out funnels. Try to force movement. Uses beam fence BC, but gets hit with the peacock spread. Uses scatter shot in order to try and catch an off-axis hit. Uh, ABC saved the day for full cloth. Otherwise, if it was any other suit, he would have probably gotten hit and staggered. Ooh, gets hit with the. I wouldn't say random assist. It seemed like it was kind of planned, but it seemed like GPO3 was really putting in a lot of work. Gets knocked down with the main to funnel combo. And that's where Perfect Strike gets uh, knocked out. Okay, I see what happened there. In a close quarter situation, if you try to shoot against full cloth or any kind of suit that has really good melee capabilities, it's going to be a losing battle. It turns into rock, paper, scissors. So you're either going to have to block or hope to God that you buy enough time in order to uh, step away from the whole situation. Because there are five things that Full Cloth can hit you with. There's his side whip. There's his uppercut whip. There's his CSB during uh, Murasama Blaster. That's three. There's also his uh, side melee, which can launch you up if you still have enough health. And uh, his scissor anchor. If he notices that you're going to be using melee against him, he could just step back and use his scissor anchor in order to pull you in and do a lot of damage as, in counter, as you counter hit them. Now he tries to play the range game since he's bleeding, but gets hit with a standard Zunda. Or a three shot combo.
And I think the last perspective is GPO3. The star of the show in this match. Uses those rockets liberally. Just throw them out, see if each one tracks and hits. And they do hit their mark. Uses a, uses a step boost. They also use the micro missiles in order to try and uh, thin the neutral game out. Great use of that that uh, build strike assist because it's a pretty much a free damage assist once it hits. Not only it stuns on the first hit, but it launches after the second and third, and any other shot can pretty much be a guaranteed hit. If you react fast enough. Ooh, stopped him from using his BC. Uses micro missiles again in order to try and have perfect strike back off, which it worked. Micro missiles again. Oh, I think it was expecting a shot from Perfect Strike, and that's why he kind of guarded. But uh, in the end, that defensive play it really came into a great amount of effect, and Testament and Luke take it two one. Oh, this is Grand Finals, so... Yeah, it is Grand Finals. He did say that it was mostly going to be Grand Finals and Losers. So it's going to be some time before some more stuff comes up. So, just be patient and just uh, keep an eye out on his YouTube channel. Oh, okay. Throws out funnels. Manages to get a good hit on those on that BC. Oh, he tried to go for that CCAB, try to get that knockdown in, but that didn't work out. Probably felt like the distance wasn't good, good enough. A lot more using of uh, scatter shot. He's definitely playing the range game a lot more this time. Nice use, nice stun right there. Both are in critical condition. Alright, this seems to be a good position for them boys. He's letting Perfect Strike do his work. Manages to get that nice CSA from a distance. You notice that full cloth is starting to close in. Oh, but that was a bad move right there. Oh, 
Alright, who got the winning kill? Ah, perfect strike got the winning kill. You can hear the faint assault waves playing in the background too. If you have headphones on, that is. Alright, from the perspective of GPO3, starts off with the regular micro missiles and then continues over the other micro missiles. Tries to pollute the area with some wrist with some beam rifle shots and missiles. It seems like he's playing a lot more reserved this time. Resorting to using his CSA a lot more. <laughs> oh, that bullshit tracking. No, we do not need more H1. I'm pretty sure barely anybody in the Midwest plays H1. Tries to close in the distance a little bit more, see if he gets some good shots in. Use demolition chain in order to quickly turn around and try to put himself in the guard position. Perfect strike burst, but really got in that ass. Yep, so GPO1 is overcosted. Gets swept with that CSA from distance. Accidentally hits uh, his accidentally hits test with uh, his mega beam cannon. Just a torrent of rockets right there. Nice use of the demolition chain in order to add that extra mobility and score a free knockdown. Catches that landing. And just sends nothing but rockets after him. Demolition change just in case if he if uh, Nightingale threw out some funnels or the funnels are already on him. And that was game. Gets hit by yet again. Perfect strikes acne cannon. Like I said, I don't think anyone in the Midwest plays H1. This is mostly a competitive tournament. Uh, Frosty Faustings, which happened uh, two weeks ago. Alright, whose perspective? Full cloth. Activates Murasama and Peacock Smasher. Or CSA or CSB. Goes after Perfect Strike, but decides to go for Nightingale since he was a lot faster. Uses Wildfire, but misses. Reloads. Tries to. Ooh, gets knocked down for his troubles. Doesn't veer into the scatter shot. Mostly plays a much more of a mid distance range game, just in case if Nightingale decides to go with something extravagant, maybe CSB or. CCAB Alright gets CSA and CSB back but gets knocked down gets back up and try to get that momentum back CCAB but was still in hit stun long enough in order to get knocked down the ground anyway 
Nice side B, but it gets cut out. Seemed like he got he hit something. Almost hit perfect strike right beside him. Now his CSC and CAC, CSA and CSB are out. Nightingale sent out his funnels, try to catch some sort of landing or force some sort of movement. Gets hit with a CC8B. Had to cut out, otherwise he would have been dead right out. Perfect Strike is right on his ass, and then he's probably going to get shot from the back or land right into it. I think he probably lands into a Agni. I just have a good feeling that he landed in it rather than getting hit by it. Ah, he does get hit by it. Uh, let me see who followed. T Run eighty five. Thank f thank you for the follow, man. Alright, now we are in Perfect Strike's perspective. There's a close range CSA. That's kind of ballsy. Try to say hello to ground using his uh, boost dive. Get a feel for the movement. See how the positions are always changing. Always remains behind Nightingale. Just to act as wingman. Throws out a few, con few uh, conservative shots. Has CSA primed and lands its mark. Tries to go after full cloth, see if he can kind of stop his movement. He succeeds in doing so. A whiff from the CCAB. Sets his sights again on full cloth again. The awkward vector is kind of making it hard for him to actually catch up to full cloth and try to punish him with CCAB. Gets wet for his troubles. Oh wait, I'll be right there, just gonna get the door. My golf. Mike on. I'm sorry about that. Then throws out a few agonies, see if anything hits. The wild. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not being mean to the cat.
I was about to say, the gussiness on Lumen to even go for that CCAB. CCAB again. Burst. Gets hit. Uh, let me see. There's a certain point where. Yep. There it is. That was it. I don't know if he forced the step dive, but that assist was definitely the key factor in landing that shot. He watches him, shoots a few rounds in order to kind of uh, set the pace. And I think, judging from the streak from full cloth, he does do a step boost, which does use a lot more boost in return for uh, cut it, cutting initial tracking. But the moment he took to the air, Fulkoth tried to dive against it. He step dive, but at the same time, Lumen was looking at that opportunity, fired the Agni right before he landed, and it hit its mark right there. Alright, so it's 2-2. Two, two. Either that or my math is starting to suck now. Let me check the playlist. Yeah, it is the last match. All right, it's two two. Winner takes all. Folk Auth already starting out the gates with uh, CSA and CSB, but Opsid go for a much more close range fight. Lands a few good hits with that Zuna combination. Also lands a good hit with his Get Hard Assist. But now he has to play a little bit more defensively. Tries to gun after a perfect strike at a distance. Also trying to buy enough time for those for his charge weapons to come back online. Wish they do, but he's in critical condition. So is he gonna opt for a much more range option or is he gonna go crazy? Nope, doesn't really get much of a chance. Yep, he's opting for a more range option. Try to play it safe. Oh, but I think... Pompidou was kind of second-guessing himself after... that exchange. Nice use of Shining Edge in order to counter that. Nice use of Assist in order to counter his approach, too. Out of lock assist. Nice to get the defense in order to keep him from moving in. 
GPO3. Oh, but gets hit with a super. That super has a very ridiculous muscle correction that makes it hard to kind of anticipate as well as try to avoid. Flies high into the sky, try to get his bearings, and also try to mess up the vectors. Goes in and eliminates Perfect Strike. All right, next perspective. Who do we got? GPO3's perspective. So also with the CSA, try to hit from a distance. Get sniped with the Ag with the Agni cannon. Nice finish on that one. Throws out another assist, try to see if anything else gets fished in. Lines up his shots pretty well. Uses micro missiles in order to fill the screen. Mega Beam Hone misses Mark. Throws out some more micro missiles. Nice hit with the mega beam cannon. Throws out micro missiles, try to anticipate the movement towards those missiles. Gets knocked down on Zunda. And while both Perfect Strike and Full Cloth had their attention on Perfect Strike and Nightingale had their attention on Full Cloth, it allowed for GPO3 in order to get a space in. Run. Spacing his shots very carefully, but he actually gets. He's actually lucky. Let me see. Yeah, I think that's that super was meant for full cloth, but uh, full cloth stepped at the right time to break the muzzle correction. But the active part of the funnels during that super were still out long enough for GPO three to get hit, or rather, he walked into that. <laughs> You'll get hit with a scatter shot, but yikes. Getting a little bit closer, but that was actually a good finish. Those two hits from GPO3's main really did a number on him. Like someone could have just breathed on him and he would have been dead. But I think the deciding thing that happened the most... Perfect Strike tried to go after GPO3 because he was at low health. He was at low health himself. Full cloth was right beside GPO3. And GPO3 was pretty much spared from whatever kind of shenanigans that would have happened since he was against the boundary line. If full cloth was not there, that would have been game.
All right, next perspective. It is from Perfect Strikes perspective. Fish is out with his CSA. See if anyone's gonna move in. Fires his AB, no AC. Moves in with CCAB, but no hit. But manages to get an assist out. Ooh, gets hit with uh, full cloth assist. Has CSA primed and used it. Oh, I don't know why you actually tried to go after him like that. Probably use his shining edge would have been much better than trying to approach him while he was in burst. There, that was a good use of shining edge right there. Tries to score a knockdown against full full cloth. Mm -hmm. Wow, lands a nice CCAB. Ah, but that's what did him in. He tried to go for a CCAB, but I think he probably would have benefited from going a little bit less ham and probably try to go for a more safe approach by using either beam rifle or something that neither full cloth or GPO3 would have expected. You'll be surprised by the amount of uh, surprise C CSBs can hit. Alright, last perspective is... Well, not last. From a Nightingale's perspective. Tries to swerve in, but was a little bit too close to full cloth. Gets knocked down. Throws out a fence. And hope that it was stunned. But no luck. Funnels deployed. Try to force some movement. I think that was a CCAB attempt, but that was nullified right there. Throws out funnels some more. Probably would have hit, but I think the second part of it hit. Nice use of assist, but I think he would have let it rock. He should have let it rock, so it would have been a, little a bit of free more, a little bit more free damage. There was a fence and funnels. I don't think he knocked down though. Uh. Goes a lightning burst, stuns full cloth, and uses CCAB to score that knockdown. Goes on full offensive with those uh, support funnels during that burst.
Tries to close in, uses scatter shot, but it was way too high for Nightingale to catch up. So that's it for the grand finals analysis. There's still some losers matches that should be coming up next. So that was uh, Testament and Lukewarm Holiday as the winners of Frosty Faustings. Alright, who's in losers? Okay, let me look. I know it's Pop and Lumen versus Volpe. No, wait, wait, let me scroll down. Yeah, Volpe and Coconuts. I might try to X copy whatever Sinanchi tech he has, so. Let's see what Volpe does. Start off with Nine Gales perspective. Tries a fish for a god of a trend. Now the thing is, Sinanji can be quite hard to hit, and especially hard to landing punish. But that's if Sinanji is kind of mobile in a conservative way. Meaning that he only uses his special movement for moments where he's actually confident that something will hit. Other than that, he will probably stay low to the ground or use his uh, asteroid jump. But it seems like Sanon just bleeding so far. Ah, uh, gets hit by the fence, but I think any other melee would have killed besides using CCAP. I guess it was just being on the safe side in case God Ultran fired something. Ah, that Oki. That Oki Zumi. Throws out funnels to see if he can catch landing. Oh, that was close. Yeah, that fence is scary, especially since it can correct pretty accurately at a close distance, too. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He tried to guard, but that assist blew him up. But perfect strike clean the house. Nightingale is scary altogether. Like I said, he is the Samao Hong of Gundam Versus. No suit should be moving. No suit that big should be moving that fast, but here he is. Now, Gardalotran, or Gardalotan, however he pronounces its name, this thing can be a bully for two reasons. It has a lot of widespread attacks from a distance, and it is very mobile. Like, extremely mobile. The only thing is that 
be glad that friendly fire doesn't do unscaled damage to friendlies. Because if you get hit by it, you're going to get hurt pretty bad. And the least you could do is just piss someone off. If you're playing God of War 10. But God of Latan can control space like no other because of its uh, widespread attacks. It does a better job than what uh, Boundock does with his uh, his other beams. Using 2B in order to get a little bit of height. Uses that Kashashi assist. I manages to hit with the missile portion of the Garros. That was AC. Which you can kind of control the distance of AC's deployment if you hold a certain direction. I think you can send them even you can send them further out if you hold eight or have them detonate close to you by holding two. I think. I'm not entirely sure about that, but that's something I could probably test. And there's a caveat of uh, her AC missiles. They detonate upon contact. Oh, that's what she tried to do. That's what that... So... If you're stuck against a rock in a hard place like that, you're right off just blocking. Because BC is only good for counting like stray beam rifle shots. Never good for beams. Uh oh. Perfect strike is on that ass. Like that. It is very important. Blocking may be ill-advised, but to have the knowledge of when to block is much more important because it lessens the impact of the of the opponent's offense. <clears throat> All right, Sinanch's perspective. Sinanju is mostly. Let me put it this way. Sinanju is the perfect suit if you have all of your fundamentals intact. He is the most well rounded suit if you have a good idea of how fundamentals work in this game. Why I say that? Because majority of his attacks, mostly his range attacks. Rely on a lot of landing punishing. At least I believe that Sinatra's that way.
I don't know if anybody else has like different preferences or if it has something else, but I feel that Sinatra is more towards that pure fundamental line. Turn X, I haven't really played much of it, so I can't really give much of an opinion to it. But I'm pretty sure it does have a lot of things that really teach you the ropes of how certain funnel suits work. Right, I'll just uh, go back a little bit. A step dive using his spiral bazooka. Tries to pick out a landing, but no luck. And like what he's doing here, using uh, the barrel roll command in order to kind of use it as a special movement rather than just let the fires, let the missiles go. Tried to use a grenade launcher, but that didn't work out so well. I feel like you have to be at a certain distance for your grenade launcher to be effective. Oh, that's not good. Kind of a late burst. Not really a good position. Now got all the is bre is bleeding pretty badly. I hmm, wonder what happened there. I feel like Sinatra was doing the best he could, but at the same time, there were a lot of things that, I don't know, Sinatra with Sinatra just doesn't seem to be the absolute best thing. If you have somebody in order to cover his more direct damage, say like a beam assist or something of the like. They might be able to cover him. That perfect strike is moving around. Try to get a feel. There was a few Agnes shots here and there. Gets hits while getting staying close to the ground. Hmm, that was a bad approach by Sinanji. Oh, 
CSB I don't think is that good in GVS, which is the uh, Gatling gun and missile launcher combo. That's the CSB. I think the tracking on his uh, CSB missiles are kind of weak. That's why you don't really see top players use it as much in this game. Plus, it's not much of a hot button. It's not much of a hot button tool to use anyway. Like you can catch someone off guard with it. That's one thing, but at the same time, its properties don't really bode well with using it at all. Alright, match two. His, his perspective this time. I'm still in Nightingale. Starts off with the funnels. Gets hit with hits and on with the scatter shot. What the hold up, what the hell? Why the beam bent like that? Throws off fence, try to catch a landing or any off of movement. Throws off funnels. And no hit on the CSA. I try to melee. Oh, that was kind of a brain fart right there. I think it was trying to bank on the the striker in order to help him defend. Uh oh. So now you can't afford to die here. Now Sinanj is in real trouble. Oh, but if Nightingale actually capitalized on that scatter shot, that would have been game. But it was still game nonetheless. Alright, now let me see. In this kind of situation where you're up against a very mobile suit, uh -huh, God of Latran should be using two AB. Because that spread is just enough in order to catch people moving a lot from side to side. That. That particular attack should be used religiously against Nightingale. And I'm glad that God of Latan is actually using that more in this match. Mm. 
Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like a very comfortable time for a God of Latan anyway. I still feel like it's a bit worth the risk then. Especially if you're using it at a certain distance. Though, one thing I do not understand is, uh... Garo Ten is not really using CSA as much. That 2B is good and all, but if you don't have any means in order to, like, skirt your defense to a more offensive play, then you're kind of just leaving yourself open, and nonetheless... Oh, that was unfortunate! <laughs> uh, that's actually unfortunate. Oh, that's not good. Nice use of the missiles, but a little bit too far. Good use of 2A, 2AB, but... Mm. See you, see, you see where I'm coming from too, Evan. Using that momentum from the slide of CSA makes you a bit harder to hit. Cancel that to any kind of beam and you're pretty much uh, on Crisco. Now let's see what Sinanji does. I feel like in this kind of situation, especially in this kind of matchup, using CSA will be ill-advised. Most of the time I should I would be using my main, my bazooka, or my uh my asteroids. I would not use CSA unless if it's Evidently clear that they're going to be low on boost or they're going to be making very erratic movements. <laughs> yep, there was another CSA attempt. No, oh, oh, that was not a good move. But I think the reason why he was moving like that was because he was pressured at uh, God of Latan's health. Trying to prevent the overcost and trying to have himself die first. Tries to move in. Try to close that distance, but the fence wasn't just enough in order to keep him out. Oh, nice step. Nice step melee, just in case if there were any cut attempts. Alright, let me see if any of you guys know what's wrong with this picture here. Tell me what's wrong with this picture. You can forget about the quality of the video and just 
If you can make out what's going on in this picture, you would have a good idea of what's wrong. Minus one point for Evan. Anyone else? Yep. He has his back facing Nightingale. I probably just gave the answer away. But yeah, he has his back facing Nightingale, who was practically almost dead and is in burst. I guess Lightning, I guess uh, Sinanju is using Blaze Gear for his uh, melee stuff. Quite frankly, Sinanju does have some good melee tools, but when you're up against suits like Nightingale or Perfect Strike, you have to really plan out your offense. But the main issue that I have here is that he has his back facing Nightingale. And that's what happens. The moment you take your eyes off of a much, much more vulnerable yet dangerous threat, that's where you're going to get hurt. Hit with the scatter shot. New escape with his life. But point blank. I feel like Sinanju, you have to really plan out your attacks. You can rush in, you can do all that jazz, but if you're playing a range game with Sinanju, you always have to be watching certain things. Otherwise, you're just gonna keep dancing around and not get much done. And I feel like Gardelotan should be more aggressive the moment Sinanju was low on health, not the other way around. Forgive me if I'm being harsh, but I'm being also honest too. I mean, I've done this, I've done stupid stuff that's probably worse than that. But I don't want anyone else in order to make the same mistakes in a much more competitive setting. Get 
Alright, fishing out with the Agnes. Lumen is maintaining a good distance and found a good opportunity to use that CCAB. Mulaflaga, are you drunk? That muscle correction sucks. CC CSA. It always seems like he prefers to do CSA outside of Redlock. Yeah, I think fence, the fences don't friendly fire. You can have them out as long as you can, and it will still not friendly fire. And I like how uh, Lumen is actually threatening with that BC. Now this is the same match, it's just uh, different perspectives. Alright, Luce is final, I think this is 2-0, and after that I'm probably going to call it a night. Alright, starting off with Nightingale, he's a scatter shot. Throws out CSB in hopes of hitting Sinanju out of the strange position. Nice use of fence. Throws out funnels in order to force movement and manages to get a nice landing punish. He seems to be focusing heavily on Sinanju now. And it seems like Sinanju is actually fronting this time. Nice hit from Sinanju. So far, he's actually doing much better this time. Runs into <laughs> Lumen's CSA again. A nice step. And it looks like... Oh, I was about to say. Sinanju is bleeding. And Garotan is actually playing back a little bit more. Oh, nice punish with the fences. Moves in. Sinanju bursts and... Gotti got Swiss cheesed. I feel like he tried to block. Either block or step. Lands on the funnel, lands on the fence. Oh! That is just a wacky looking super when it aims up like that.
I feel like it barely even coming to the match. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> yep, Goto Ten is taking a much more reserved approach. Doesn't go out too far off. Try to maintain the ill position. And another thing, you can cancel from 5 AB to 2 AB. I don't think you can do it vice versa. I, I think you can cancel it vice versa, but from 5 AB to 2 AB, you can pretty much mix things up a little bit. Nice breakaway. Nice use of 2B in step, but gets hit with the green lock CSA from Perfect Strike. Probably could have taken to the skies and it would have hit better. Nice knockdown with the Zunda. Yeah, so far, God of Latan is doing a much better life for this time. Though, another thing is the lack of CSA is still bothering me. I feel like Gato 10 is much more needed airborne than she is on the ground. Nice landing punish with the Kashad assist. Good that she, good that the Gato Tan is actually staying in motion, and also using less boost in the process. But God, damn that hurts! All right, next perspective is from Sinanju. <laughs> it seems like Sinanju is now more willing to, to kind of uh, throw out some rockets around. Nice catch on the side side bazooka. Ah, but miscalculated on that movement. And I think he could be using BC a little bit more. Especially since Pompidou's been mostly using his beam rifle the most times. 
Never once does he uh, approach with like CCAB or any kind of melee. It's mostly been a ranged affair. A nice close up. Could have really could have went in a little bit harder that time. You had the power. No, that was risky. You know, I think it wasn't worth the risk either. Ah, uh, dove right into the fence. Now that was definitely gutsy. Probably to finish off with the assist in order to make it cleaner, but uh, yep. Next perspective. I think would be in perfect strike. Now he's definitely playing things differently. But the moment he's in range, that's when he starts snapping back to his usual play style. Perfect strike can kind of middle between mid range to close range thanks to his tools. But to play in a way that both defense and offense in a flexible manner does have its merits. And for someone like Lumen, it's definitely apparent. He uses perfect strike in a way that I would never even think about using. Nice cut from uh, Nightingale using those funnels. And he's been landing those Agni shots like nothing. I think he landed a lot more Agni shots in his in this kind of match than uh, against uh, Test and Luke. Nice steps. Nice either of assist in order to kind of uh, beat that step war. And that's that. That's what we have so far. I think that might be it. Yeah, that's it. That's it for that's it for the matches. So, yeah. Again, thanks everybody for watching. Just gonna cut this short for a little while. It does take a bit out of me, so so I don't have the stamina like uh, all the other commentators in the business but just do me a favor just give a huge shout out to lukewarm holiday for making these uploads even possible like I said before streaming Gundam versus is quite a pain in the ass in a competitive setting so any little bit of information, any little bit of videos, any little bit of anything helps.
So, with that, I say good night, and I'll probably be back sometime, I don't know, later this week. Who knows? So, if you want to follow me on Twitter, go right ahead. You could just uh, put in exclamation point media. If you want to follow my Discord, you can put in exclamation point Discord and join the blue base. And that's pretty much it. Catch you guys later. I still need to find an outro. I'll probably come up with something later. So, peace.